Right. Oops, let's get you right first. Okay, as you can see, I'm in the kitchen. And now I'm going to talk you through, I think over the next two or three days it will be, how I do my loaf, my sourdough. Now, as I've said, you know, I've got my, what I call my mother, which is Diddy, after my brothers. And uh, it's been out of the fridge. Um, it was taken out yesterday because when you put them in, you have to put them in the fridge to, so they go to sleep when they're not being used. So um, I'll get them out with the heat because the heat is, is what wakes them all up. So, and uh, yes, he's got, he, oh, he has, he's very much awake. He's got his bubbles and everything in there. So, and I've got my jug, as I said, of, um, it's Luke, and it's warm water. I can feel it through the jug. You know, it's not hot. It has to be warm, warm you know, warm water. That's the way I do it. That I've boiled in the kettle. Now, sometimes I will boil a kettle and leave it like I've done the today, if I remember. But other times, if I forget to do that part, I will um, get, just boil the kettle and then just put a little bit of tap water in it, you know, to equal it all out. But what I will say is that when I've made bread before I did the sourdough, in my opinion, you had warm water when you added it with the yeast. Now, this has got a natural yeast in it because all this is is flour and water. It's all this is in here. OK, it's flour and water. Now, this one is over a year old, which is compared to some of some, it's very young. And I said to my Rebecca the other day, actually, I made up, I said, if anything happens to me, sweetie, I said, you do realise you've got to look after your Uncle Diddy. She went, what? <laughs> I said, the loaf. <laughs> she went, oh, my gosh, Mum. So when all this is um, moved on, she's going to come down and we're going to make one together so she knows how I do it. And she's gladly going to take him on because he is a little living thing in here. You know, <laughs> he really is. So, um, getting back, so lukewarm water, okay, because um, I think obviously it feeds on the, the yeast and that will warm it all up and get it going, so you get a nice, what's the name, right, so I'm going to tilt you down, okay, another thing I will say, um, I do use a, the Lidl's strong white bread flour, you can use a, um, oh, what's it called, wholemeal, I've never tried it with the wholemeal, I've had mixed reviews with people that i know that have said they haven't liked it or they have um but you know i'm not changing what i know works and i've used this right from the beginning and it is uh it works well with me so it is the Lidl's um strong white bread flour so any any you know bread flour but it has to be a bread flour right so what i will say obviously i've got my scales i'm going to tilt you down so you can see exactly what I'm doing. There we go. Now, this is what I have adapted um, with different recipes and what I've come together with. But what I will say is that um, it's, you know, these are really estimates, but I do like to have them on the scales. They're all in grams, not ounces. They're all in grams. So I get my big bowl, plonk it on and zero it like you do with anything cooking. Now you, oh, hold on, let me get, because what you've got to, sorry about all the noise, what you've got to realize is in there, in my starter, in my mother, there is a, it's flour and water basically. And it has, as I've said, it's produced a natural yeast in there over the time. So whenever you take anything out, you've got to replace and refeed it. So I, but I'm going to do all that this morning. So don't worry. So what we need is 95 grams ish. I do and try to get this as much whoop, as I said, and I've gone over. All right, let's get my, um, where are we? My little spoon. Take a bit of him out. Sometimes, you know, because it is hard, I will go to 96, 97 for anything else. But you've got to realise as well, because this is flour and water, it's like glue. So whatever you do, do not get rid of all this stuff down at your um, down your sink because it just clogs it up. OK, so I've gone to 97, but as I say, I've 95 and I will write 95 on the bottom of the screen in a moment. When it comes to the water, so zero it up again. Then you put your water in, okay? And it's 100 grams. I know it seems weird putting in grams with the liquid. There we go. Okay. But it's 100 grams of water. Zero it again. 
and this time we've got 120 grams of the flour. Right, I've gone over. That's why I put the flour in last because then I can take out <laughs> because it doesn't. There we go. That will be fine. Right. So do that back up. Okay. Now I'll give it a mix with my wooden spoon, and it will come together, and I'll, you'll see exactly what it looks like. Keep it all in from the sides. See, and it's like an elastic, okay? And it smells like a, um, I don't know if anybody of you have know anybody that's made wine, but basically this is literally what it's like when they're in the demijohns, it smells like it's homemade wine. Can you bear with me, please? Keep her out. Right, okay, so don't over mix. Put it like that. There you go. As I say, because it, it, it is like a glue, because it's basically flour and water. Now, what I will do, if you can see, wait, get rid of that bit. There you go. Put that on there. Oh, actually, put that on there. Right, see, look, if you look, you can already see the bubbles in there forming. Now, that's at feeding, it's already started to feed. Okay, so now what you do is I made some napkins, leave it like that, cover it up, and uh, this is proofing, okay, and then leave it. Now I'll leave this overnight. Um, I'll show you again what it looks like in the morning, and if it's to the size that I'd like it to be, then I will start and do the next stage. If not, I will be doing it the day after. But okay, so that's that bit done. Now, as I said, because we've taken out from him, we now have to feed him, okay? Let me wipe my finger, okay? Righty home. So, yet again, flour and the water that you have left over. So, this I do not weigh. I just look it in and see if what he needs basically and water because you know a lot of people will say you know I've taken the 95 grams out then I put the 95 grams worth of everything and no I've never done that I just eyeball it and then I get it to a stage where the it's like um Yorkshire pudding mix <laughs> okay <laughs> so when you let me get rid of it, give it a good stir that's not a good stir you have to give him a good stir and because he's been fed I will leave him out for the rest of the day and put him back in the fridge for, to, for the night uh, put back in the fridge tonight to sleep again until next week when I get him out okay so let's have a look yeah okay so when you lift it up see the bubbles look at the bubbles look he's feeding they're all popping away can you see that there you go and that actually is a little living thing Okay, it's marvellous, absolutely fascinating. It really, really is. I love it. And the bread when it's made is, is, is oh, it's just adorable. It really is. But just, And I will say, actually, he has, I have actually given quite a few of um, bits of Diddy out, you know, and there is people out there making them, to making loaves. And I said to my brother, I said, do you realise you're having babies? He went, oh, yeah, and he goes. <laughs> but look at the bubbles in him now. See, that's him feeding. So, as I said, I'll leave him out now until this evening. Let him feed away. Okay, so I'll get the little lid, wipe him down, because obviously he, he was tipped out. Okay, and then leave him there, leave him out until tonight, put him back to sleep, and I'll clean up my unit, because <laughs> it is a messy process, but it's well worth it. Hello, right, I'm back. This is day two of the um, sourdough. So my um, starter and all that that we did yesterday has been left overnight. Um, at the moment it is 10 to one in the afternoon. So I have left. There you go, look. 
how much that has grown with leaving that that time okay right then so the next thing we've got to do yet again all in grams okay is put it on there I on your scales I'm going to there we go right then okay it's on the scales been zeroed now what we have to actually do is for the next day obviously you've got water exactly the same as we had yesterday boiled in the kettle and just um, added some cold water from the tap to make it lukewarm if you have it too hot you see it's going to kill the natural yeast in it so you just need it lukewarm so and we actually add 300 grams of water as I did yesterday, I'll write everything on the bottom of the screen for you. So, okay then, right, 300 grams of water. Now what you've got to do, this actually is the part I don't like, but there we go, is you have to mix this up with your hand, okay? I just don't know why I don't like this, but I just don't like it. Right, I don't know why you have to mix it up with your hand, but the, the person that actually I got this... Um, this part from reckoned it was better and as I say touch wood it's been fine okay so mix it all up that's right you are going to have little lumpy bits but that is absolutely fine right then look at all them bubbles in there see it all is all down to the bubbles right set zero again on your get onto your scales Plonk that on. Right, okay. Now this is very, very important, all right? Once I actually did forget to do this and the bread didn't taste very nice, you do need one teaspoon, that's all, of salt. As I say, we're not normal salt eaters. We don't add it to our vegetables or anything like that. But when it comes to this, you do have to add it. Right, zero up again. Now we need 500 grams, yet again, of the strong bread flour. those two in a moment right yep that's fine right then so basically that is the scales the job of the scales done you don't need them anymore with a wooden spoon mix it up now this is going to be quite wet okay so don't worry because that is I find I used to do it a little bit drier but it just wasn't as nice it really wasn't Right, oh, wait, oh, mix, mix it all up. Get all those bits off the side because you want every piece because it tastes so nice. So you want the whole thing. Get all those bits off the bottom. Right, let's get you out. Oh, hold on one moment. Flower your surface. Pop it out like that. You still feel warm, the little bit of warmth within that you've used, the little bit of water. Right, let's put you there. Now, as you know, when it comes to my craft things, as I've said way many, a few times before, that when it comes to buying stuff with which has got like you know the, the name of what you're doing on it it's going to be a lot more money so as you can imagine with anything that I do I have found alternatives <laughs> okay right then so I have actually they do actually suggest that you go and get a scraper like you know a proper bread scraper well I went to a DIY what they call a DIY um uh, a DIY store here and I can't remember what they're called anywhere else. And I went and got one of the, the scrapers. It was a it was a, a, a pound, and you got I got this one and a big one, and this one I use all the time. And it's just easy, you see, to get this the dough in and out of my bowl and so on. So this will be used. 
or as I say, you can go and get a proper scraper. Now, this, you don't actually want to need that much. You really don't. You just want to get it together. Just a little bit. Okay. Just like so. And then what I do is I tuck it under, always tuck it underneath. This is quite a messy job, I will say. You do get a lot of flour everywhere, but when don't you when you're baking, eh? That's what I say. And it's worth it, worth it all along. <laughs> right then, so, and then get, tuck your edges in like that, and then pop it in the bowl. Get your cloth again. Cover it up. Right then, I'm back. Okay, I've just gone and washed my hands. Now, as you saw on that surface there, there is some flour left. Now, obviously with flour at the moment being like gold dust, what I have been doing is been getting a little bowl because all you need now is the flour um, for every time you do your stretch and fold. So after this 45 minutes, let's put this in here. Um, I've set my timer actually. There we go. 45 minutes and we'll do our first stretch and fold now we've got to do that four times so it's stretch and fold 45 minutes and so on four times every time I do this process I'll get my bread out and I'll, I'll do it. I'll show you because you will actually see it grow okay and then we'll get to the next start part and then as I say tomorrow will be baking day okay so because the, the temperature has actually risen it's really good because it's only been a three day process where if it was in the winter it would have been a four day process um but as i say it's well worth it really is well worth it you know um we thoroughly right then hello it's been me 45 minutes actually it's been a little bit over to be honest with you it doesn't have to be precisely 45 minutes don't go under but you can go over a bit sometimes. You know, sometimes I've been started it down here and then let it proof for 45 minutes and then go upstairs and record a podcast or do some crafting or whatever and then come down. But as long as it's not under the 45 minutes and, um, you know, what I mean, some of them I do keep precise. But the only reason I actually went about 10 minutes over is because Glenn came home from work because <laughs> he's been at work since early hours of the morning and now he's, um, he's disappeared off to bed for a couple of hours. Right then, I am going to tilt you down because of that. And that is just after one lot of 45 minutes sat down. You can see where the bubbles, as I say, because there's all the bubbles there. It's sourdough, when you open it, when you actually cut into it, it is a lot of bubbly. Right then, so there's the flour that we rescued before. A little bit more flour. On the base, get your scraper. Scrape it out. Every little piece you can get, actually. You don't want to waste any of it. Right, put that back up there. Use it again in a minute. Right, now we're going to stretch and fold, okay? So, pull it out like so that's a stretch and obviously don't you know rip it at all fold it over that's your fold turn it do the same you'll feel how light this dough is try and be gentle over over Turn it and then just tuck it under like we did before. Get it nice on the bottom. Bit of flour in the bottom of your um, your bowl just makes it a lot easier. Pop it in. There we go. Forty-five minutes. Now, 
What I do is, because I'm a bit of a dizzy one and I do forget what I'll number them on, so I always write down one to four and mark them off. So yet again, don't waste your flour. Reuse. There we go. And then obviously I'll do the tidy up in a minute. Let's get you back up. Okay, right then, so the first proofing actually has started. Okay, so we've got to, we've marked off the one, then we'll do this another three times. Okay, hello, I'm back 45 minutes later to be precise this time. And as you can see, let's lift it up. It has yet again grown. So let's tilt you down. We'll do stretch and fold number two. Okay. Okay, 45 minutes later, yet again. Now we're on number three. Now what I have done is on number one, stretch and fold number one, I have showed you exactly how to do it. Stretch and fold number two, I have showed you how to do it, but I've speeded it up and took out the, um, the volume. Um, so that is exactly what I'm gonna do now, okay? So what I'll do is I'll just show you what it's like. You can see how much it's, oh, blimey, it's getting heavy. How much is growing, look amazing <laughs> okay so i will do what i have been doing tilt you down do another stretch and fold which i'm going to speed up and um and then the last one i'll show you something else so I'm back for the final part of today actually then I won't be back now till the morning okay so here is our <laughs> size of it okay so as I've done for the last two stretch and folds I am going to um, uh, speed it up and uh, and then at the end I'm gonna explain what we do right at the end of this process so okay then let's tilt you down Right, okay, now if you see right there, see that bubble, massive one, there's a big one there. Now all these bubbles, they are supposed to be there, so please don't burst them or nothing like that, okay, if you can help it. But yep, that is what they're supposed to do. So, right then, let's lift you up. that um, you know I have sourced a different thing so a lot of people will go and buy or have what they call a uh, proofing basket um, for your sourdough which uh, yes I looked online and I thought no there's got to be another way around this so a colander all it is is a plastic colander okay and I already had this I pop the napkin that has covered the top of my sourdough. I will, what's left on here, let's, there you go, let's tilt you down. There you, that's better, right. So the flour that's here, 
I do sprinkle a little in just to, you know, just in case. Pop him in. Fold over. Don't, you know, push down on it or nothing like that. Sorry, there will be some crinkling. Pop it into a carrier bag. Now, if you've got one of those carrier bags with the long handles, just tie it round. But what I do is I've got these clips. Get the air out as best you can. Clip the end, because what the whole thing idea of it is, is you've got to try and stop the top of that bread um, what's, uh, drying out. And then I get one of my old plates, pop it on top, put it in the fridge overnight. Let him go back to um, back to sleep, have a rest, because let's face it, you know we've been pulling him around all day. Um, let him have a sleep and then in the morning is baking time. But what I will say is what I'll do is I'll get up in the morning as a, I'm a normally an early bird anyway, get this out and let it warm up a little bit again before I actually do put it in the oven because it's like anything. You don't want to go cold to hot or it'll like this. So yeah, so um, put it in the fridge now. Forget about it until tomorrow morning. So I'll be back then. Take care. Okay, good morning. It's well, it is nearly 11 o'clock in the morning and it's day three of the sourdough. Now, I got the actual bread out of the fridge when I got up just before seven this morning, and um, yeah, it's still wrapped up in the bag and warming up. But what I will say, what you've got to do now is put your oven, uh, or your, obviously your trays at the, uh, at the lowest point of your oven that you can, and put heat it up on 220. Um, 220. Okay, I know it's going to take a while to heat up. Now, while that is heating up, what I actually do cook mine in. Now, you're going to have to excuse this old pot. It's it's a, <laughs> it's a bit of an old tatty thing. But as I say, I have cooked so much in this in the past. But I'll, try, I'll tip you down and I'll show you. As usual, yes, you can go and buy this, that and the other. But I, just, I use this as an old cast. Well, I was saying old. It's a cast iron pot. But I'll show you what I do with it. Okay. So it's a cast iron one. Inside, I've got some um, greaseproof paper. And as you see, I do get use out of it. I use it a, a few times, a couple of three times. So this is obviously was my one from last week. So that will go, and now this will go in the oven while it's heating up. So I'll put that in now. And then when the oven's all heated up, and then um, we will get the loaf in the oven up. Ah, but I will say, now, my lovely friend Caroline uh, from Let's Just Crochet um, on Instagram is um, she f um, makes her own sourdough and um, she um, followed the starter because as I said at the beginning I couldn't remember my where I actually got my starter from uh, you know the, the actual eating recipe but she used it, um, the starter from the stuffed olive as a little um, place in Cork in Ireland they're on Instagram, they're on Facebook, and they, they actually do share their recipes. So go over and take a look at the stuffed olive, okay, on Instagram. And um, apparently, according to Caroline, they do a really good starter. So yeah, I hope that helps as well. Okay then, so I'll get my pot in the uh, oven because I've already got it heating up, and I need, you need this pot hot. And then um, we'll have a look for what the loaf looks like. So I'll be back soon. I'm back. Right, my oven's heated up. I've still got the um, the cast iron pot in, and now I'm going to take the dough. Wow, out of the bag. I'm going to tip you down so you can see it. Oh dear me! Even though it's in the fridge, it's still been doing its job. Look, look at that. That's amazing. Okay. Let's have a see if you've got a lot of air in there. No, you seem to be all right, actually. So, that's got some air, so I'm just going to knock it back a bit. Not too much. Okay, right then. Now I'm going to get the um, 
I'm going to get me cast iron pot out of the oven and I'll show you what we've got to do next. Let's tip that over like that. Let's quickly shut the oven door. Okay, right then, so. Oh, come on, don't play up now. Right, let me get me loaf in and I'm going to tip you down. Okay, can you see that? There we go, right. Yet again, you can buy um, a cutting blade thing, but I have heard mixed reviews on this. So I just use a serrated knife and you've got to score the top. I either do three lines or a cross on the top. And I'm doing the three lines today. Okay, just like that. And then you pop your lid on. Like so. And then it goes in the oven for 40 minutes with the lid on. Okay, so I'll be back in 40 minutes. Okay, I've got you set up differently, so I hope this works. I've done me 45 minutes. Wow, look at that. Get rid of the lid. Now, we're going to cook uh, this 10 minutes with the lid off, so we brown off the loaf. Okay, so I'll be back in 10 minutes. Okay, right, <clears throat> the 10 minutes are up, and let's get it out and see what it looks like. Tilt you down. There it is. Now what you do is let's get um, a clean towel because obviously all this is going to be very very hot. Okay. So what you want to do is lift it up and bang it on the bottom. See if it sounds like, like a pipe drum, really. And then, uh, get it out, there we go. Right, let's move this over. So I'm over there. So there is the sourdough loaf. Okay, and now it's gotta be cooled. It's best to let it cool off a little bit. And um, yeah. Okay, so I hope this has helped people. As I say, you know what I mean? I'm not no uh, <laughs> expert in any way. This is just the way I make mine. And um, as I say, it seems to work. So um, I hope it helps people. And uh, definitely go over and have a look at that, um, the, the sourdough starter that I recommended earlier on. And uh, yeah, and then you could be making lovely loaves like this. So take care. And I'll be back to my normal podcast very soon. Stay safe and enjoy your loaves. <laughs> Bye.